So, with the Avengers Endgame having come out recently, I wanted to share with you yet another project I made back in my good old high school days. There was this Avenger, Iron Man, know him, great guy. He had this house, slash mansion, in the Iron Man movies, beautiful place, totally fell in love with it. Anyway, I decided that for this project I would attempt to make an architectural scale model of his house, as well as the cliff thing that he decided to build it on. Oh, and I should probably mention that the whole house was made out of popsicle sticks, because that's still cool to do, right? This is how to build Tony Stark's Malibu mansion out of popsicle sticks. So first things first, I need to make a base. To do this I start off by marking out four sides of a frame onto some wood. I then cut them out and with the addition of some backing board assemble a base for our cliff landscape to sit in. Now speaking of landscape, I get cracking on that by cutting sheets of polystyrene to fit into the frame we just made. Like so. For some reason I didn't trim off the excess backing board yet, so let's just take care of that quickly and ah, perfect. Now you'll notice that I've drawn the outline of the cliff that will become the landscape. I just guesstimated the shape using the movies as a reference. So I took that outline and copied it onto some tracing paper. I then redrew the shape onto a new sheet of polystyrene. I then cut the shape out and placed it on the base. Now this doesn't really look like a cliff right now, so we need to increase the height of it. So after adding a few more layers, I'm left with this. But it still isn't cliff e enough yet, so it's time to add some realism. To make sure I get the proportions of the cliff correct in relation to the house, I first draw the house floor plan onto the top of the cliff, and then begin cutting away the excess polystyrene from the edges. I do this until I'm left with an edge that the house can comfortably overhang. Something like this. I use some sandpaper to soften any harsh edges while I slowly tweak the shape of the cliff until I'm happy, which admittedly is hardly ever. It's at this point that I realize that the house actually sits in, not on the cliff, so I have to cut away a bit of the surface so the house can comfortably nestle in. After some more trimming and sanding, I feel the shape of the cliff is as good as it's gonna get, so now I permanently attach it to the base. Or should I say ocean? Yes, that's right, the base was actually the beach and ocean below the cliff the entire time, so I tidy that up a bit by blending the height with the edge of the frame. It's also at this point that I realize the cliff face looks a little too smooth, you know, for rock, so I roughen it up a bit by making vertical cuts along the face. Also, to make the landscape look a little more realistic and aged, I use an improvised hot wire cutter to melt little recesses and caves into the cliff face. I then move on to adding some more details by plastering a few rocks onto the beach and into the sea, just because I thought it would look cool. I then turn everything into a giant chocolate cake by painting the beach and cliffs with a base coat of brown. This is now our canvas for colour. So once that's dry, I paint the cliff with a whole bunch of grey. I then use a dry brush technique to highlight the cliff's rock-like textures. I then add green to the flattest surface areas, basically anywhere where plants could conceivably grow, and I also paint the beach area beige. But before we move on to making the ocean, I want to see what the house looks like when it's overhanging the cliff, so I decide to make the first floor. So after sketching out the floor plan, I trim and interlock popsicle sticks to create the floor. Once the glue I used to join them together has dried, I cut the floor out using a Dremel tool. The tape you see is just there to stop everything from ripping apart under the vibrations of the cutting process. I now temporarily set the floor in place and check to see if it overhangs the cliff significantly. Which it surprisingly does, which makes me abnormally happy. Ego boost aside, I can now get back to making the ocean. Here I'm using a paintbrush to create an ocean texture by using tissue paper and clear drying glue. I create a shoreline by building up several layers of tissue, and simulate a current by making sure all the waves flow in the same direction. Once everything has dried, it's time to paint, so I create the illusion of depth by painting the ocean in several different shades of blue. Lastly, I highlight the tops of big waves with white. The whole landscape now looks beautifully vibrant. Oh, and I just remembered I also varnished the frame. So with the landscape done, I can now finally focus on building the actual house. I start by marking out that famous circular driveway that's always seen in the films. 
Next, I carve out the underground garage where Tony's workshop is, not forgetting to add that curved entranceway that he flies out of in the first movie. Next, I use plaster of Paris to blend the sloped entranceway and circular driveway together. This is to mimic a sort of concrete looking finish. Next, I move on to making the walls of the garage by lightly gluing popsicle sticks to some paper. I then mark out those iconic rectangular windows. And after cutting the windows out with a Dremel tool, I remove the paper template to reveal the completed popsicle stick wall. I continue making more walls in a similar fashion until the whole garage and entranceway is covered. With things starting to take shape, I temporarily replace the first floor again to see what everything looks like. And it looks good! But I do notice the floor overhanging to the right is unsupported. So after looking over my references again, I notice this area actually has a large support column beneath it. So I create one by first using polystyrene to get the shape. I then cover it with a popsicle stick wall. I also add a few support beams for good measure. And yes, the underside of the floor is orange, don't ask me why. Next I move on to plastering the circular driveway. To do this as efficiently as possible, I make a guide using some thick wire to stop the plaster from overflowing. The guide is held in place with a few pins, and after the inner circle is made, which will have a nice garden feature placed in later, I'm ready to pour the plaster. Here's a blurry photo to show that process. I know it looks quite rough, but as it dries I push it to the edges a bit more and smoothen everything out. Once dry, I remove the guides and bask upon the perfection of the finished surface. So smooth, so delicate like a freshly shaved pair of... So next I move on to building the room that sits above the garage entranceway. To do this I first have to create a polystyrene foundation for the floor to rest on. Next I cover the garage entranceway with a roof and join it seamlessly with the first floor. In hindsight though you don't even see this part so... whoops. I then raise the room foundation up a bit to its final height. I know this looks rough but fortunately it won't be visible so no worries there. With night suddenly upon us, I attach the walls that hide the polystyrene, and now with our foundations adequately prepared, I can now move on to making the floor and roof for the room. They are made following the same process I used when making the first floor like 3 minutes ago. After which, I make the walls that go between them. Also, I apologize for the quality of some of these night shots. These were the days before auto-focusing smartphones. So now I install the floor, outer and inner walls of the room. Also, I should mention, I actually have no idea what this room is supposed to be. I just made it up. With that in mind, I add the roof and the room is complete. I also attach a few support beams to the foundation beneath to keep up with the overall look of the build. Now, finally moving on to making the main house. I first create an access way to get into the garage from the first floor. I then remove the floor one last time and recreate that infamous spiral staircase that's seen so many times in the Iron Man films. With the first floor now permanently attached, I can start adding some walls, a lot of which have huge giant windows. I start with the ones facing the driveway. In this very yellow shot, I continue adding walls around the front of the house. As you can see, this part sits quite cosily in the landscape. Next I move on to designing the roofs for both the first and second floor. Fun fact, the first floor's roof doubles as the second floor's floor. It's a weird house. The roof and floors are made in the same way as before. This piece goes over the section I was just building a moment ago. Like so. Also, an exact copy of this floor is made and will be used as the roof for the second floor later. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. We still need to add more walls to the first floor. Here I'm progressing towards the main viewing area of the house. The part that overhangs the cliff. Now this is the point where the walls need to increase in height slightly so the people inside, uh, Stark, Potts, that fury guy, can get a larger view of the ocean. The roof of this section, once again, is made in the same way as all the others were, although its unique shape makes installing it rather tricky. You see, the back of the roof has to sit flat, but the front has to flare up following the walls. Oh, and also it has to have a slight bone, just because. Not to worry though, after a lot of trial and error, I managed to get it right in the end. As seen here in this super professionally taken photo. The next day brought with it the construction of the second floor. A room followed by a long wall of windows were the first things to go down. The wall facing the ocean is installed next. As you can see, the use of big picture windows really gives this house a very open feel. Finally, the second floor's roof goes on, the duplicate of the first floor's roof that I mentioned earlier, and the building is now complete. So now it's on to the details. 
So I start by adding the spiral staircase that joins the first floor to the second. This too is surrounded by big and delicate window frames. The top of the staircase has this really interesting looking double ringed skylight thing. So I make it as per my usual method, before attaching it at a slight angle just above the second floor's roof. Fun fact, I cut popsicle sticks as thin as matchsticks to support this section. It was very time consuming. Next I create the driveway's garden feature, which is really nothing more than a wall going around some pebbles with a dead tree branch in the middle. To finish off the driveway, I add two retaining walls to either side of the outer circle. I also paint any remaining brown surface areas green, and add a few anemic looking trees to complete the landscape. And with that, the house, with all this dramatic lighting, is complete. Except that it actually isn't, because I forgot to add the pool. So I remove the trees and carve the shape of the pool into the landscape. I then add flooring to the pool and surrounding deck area. I also carve out a curved walkway to the house and wall off the sides. Speaking of walls, I add those next. I also blend and colour the landscape around the pool to seamlessly integrate it into the overall scene. Finally, I add a curved staircase connecting everything to the house. One of the last things to do now is make the railing that goes around the whole building. To do this, I first insert needles into the edge of areas where people will walk. Over here I also add an outside staircase connecting the first floor to the second. Likewise, to get to that room I made in the beginning, I make a walkway connecting it to the main house. I then add needles as before. Two threads are then painstakingly attached to the tops and middles of each needle to make one continuous railing. As you can tell by the sudden change in lighting, this took a while. But with the completion of the railing, and the addition of some new, more green, and less anemic looking trees and ground covering, I can finally say that my popsicle stick model of Tony Stark's Malibu Mansion is complete. Okay, so it goes without saying that there's plenty of room for improvement. But considering that this was a high school project, for what it's worth, I'm proud of it. All in all, the build took around 3 weeks to complete, and despite the late nights and shoddy camera work, it was actually quite fun to build. In total, I think the build easily used more than 2000 popsicle sticks, so for simplicity's sake I'm just going to say it was 2000 plus and call it a day. So all that's left to say now is I hope you've enjoyed following me along on this build, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.